masonry block retaining wall feature in 12D. Just wanted to demonstrate um, how you can use this new feature that's been introduced in version 14. Alright, so you can find it under design, uh, tunnels, structures, and it's the last one here, masonry block retaining wall. Alright, this is the panel that comes up. Um, fairly straightforward. Um, let, let's go through it just to show you how it works. So first up, there's a wall definition uh, file that, that gets shipped with 12D, and that's sitting up in the in the uh, the setups area in 12D. So that's the one that's going to be reading. And over on the right here, we need to select a wall style. So if you click on the drop down, there's two styles it comes with, um, or two types. And if we select on one of those and go set, it'll draw a picture of a retaining wall. Um, with the different dimensions here um, that are sort of the different variables that, that make up the, the size of the footings and based on the height of the wall. That's all we need there. Um, next one down here we've got the um, the levels here. Um, there's the strings option which is the default but there's also a, a tins option which I'll show you on a, in another video how to use that one. I think the strings might be the, the more popular one. So let's run with that. And essentially we've got the two tabs here. We've got the design tab and the outputs tab. So design tab, what do we need to input here? So we just need to give it a set out string, um, which is this going to be this red string for, for the set out of the wall. So you just need to select a super string. Um, at this point, it, it can't be a, a super alignment. Um, so it just needs a, a super string to define the horizontal location for the wall. And just before I go and select in the strings, I'll just show you what I've got here. So on, on the left is a, a plan view here, and, and this is um, a string that I've, that I've drawn. Well, there's two strings. The, the red one, there's a green one underneath, which represents the, the, top, the, the top of the wall is the red string, and the bottom of the wall is the green string. And if I just do an inquiry on that, you'll just see, yeah, they do have levels. So that that's um, snapped to the top of the wall at RL10. And you can see it highlighting in, in the section view as well. So a cross section here of that red string and also the long section. And there's also a green string uh, under here as well, which is that one there, which is the bottom of the wall. And that's at RL9 right at the start. Okay, so they're the strings I'm going to be using, the, the two strings for top and bottom. So for the set out point, I'm going to actually, for the set out string, I'm just going to select the top of the wall string, the red one, just pick it off here and accept. And again, the, just to emphasize, the, the levels um, don't get used in the set out string. It's the strings down here that, that obviously the information uh, it uses to generate the wall. So what's your top string? So I click on the little um, picker there, pick on my top string, which is the red one, and my bottom string is my green one here. That's all it needs there. This offset clearance, you can actually offset the wall. So if I put in an offset of, of 100 mil there, positive, it'll it'll shift the wall 100 millimeters um, from the set out string to the face of the wall. And you can see the picture even updates, which gives you a good visual representation. Or you can do a, a, a negative distance as well. I can do negative 50 mil. Um, yep, 50 mil, and it'll move the the wall to the left. So let's stick to a positive um, 100 mil there, just for this exercise. And this one here is the side. So the footing is it on the right side of the setout? Um, string or is the footing on the left and you can just change that and the picture even changes as well just to show you what what's going to be generated uh, these three gray boxes here is is the your height the block height that you've well that that's actually in the standard um, definition at the top there so this type one you know the, the default is the height is 200 mil for your block height you've got the width there and the length um, and these can be changed, not through this um, panel here, not through these buttons, but, but it can be changed 
to, to suit your own custom sort of wall and I'll show you on, in another video how to, how to do that. Alright that's all we need there um, and then we've got the outputs tab so that was the design tab outputs tab is essentially where all the outputs are going to go so it's going to create some strings for us for the wall um, and they're going to have a color and it's also going to create a a solid tri mesh for the wall and they're going to it's going to have a color as well similarly for the footing uh, the footing data as well and there's also going to be a subsoil drain uh, created for you as well but not quite ready yet that's not turned on you can see that the program has turned that off it's in, it's grayed out but that hopefully will come alive soon and we could use that as well that's all we need uh, so literally just pick those few um, uh, yeah, bits of information that it needs and just hit process and once that's processed um, if you get a green bar here obviously good news um, the strings and tri meshes have been created so we'll just move that out the way um, let's add it in section view first so if we look at yeah so just highlighted these models just so it stands out so it's created the design footing strings and the design wall strings models for you and also two models for, for the mesh for the footing and the mesh for the wall so add, let's add those ones on and there's your retaining wall I guess um, and that's, this is a cross section just through this area here. So if we just do an inquiry on those, um, you can see it, it's a tri-mesh. Um, yeah, and it's on the, the mesh wall model and the same as the footing. And maybe let's have a look in 3D as well. Just turn those on from before. Um, so I've got those footing um, the mesh for the footing and the wall on here and let's just maximize that view there a bit easier to, to see let's let's come into the start here yeah so there's there's the the wall that's been created um, there's those strings that I had for the the top and the bottom and let's move on the side on view here you can see the wall stepping um, the start of the wall is obviously flat uh, for the bottom um, so that's just a constant so there's no steps in there but you can see the the top of the wall sort of stepping up as it as it needs to once it sort of runs out yeah so it's sort of working out that out by itself as it goes another thing to note as well um, see see the base footing here it's sort of stepping out as the wall gets higher so as the height increases um, yeah that the footing is is increasing as well and I'll show you a table um, that all that information is stored in and, and that's what's actually generating it sort of controls how the wall the size of the wall um, and, and the size of all the different parts and you can see here it's also even um, once the wall gets to a certain height you're getting a thicker wall um, sort of coming through here so I think it's 200 thick nominally the, the block thickness and then once it gets to a certain height it introduces it to the, the blocks it's 300 blocks a little bit thicker there and you can see that coming through yeah they're pretty cool I think um, and also yeah it's pretty pretty obvious there that the um, the walls been sort of stepping up that steeper sort of slope towards the end there and you can see the steps there being been created so you, you get the solid tri mesh and you also get the strings as well that that the corners of, of, of all the um, elements there it's not too little bit, little bit hard to see with both of them on so I'm just gonna go here I'm just gonna rerun this and change some colors because I can I guess so the wall strings I'll just change it to something um, a little bit more um, obvious there and the strings as well for the um, for the footings just just change them up just so you can see those a little bit better there we go so just put that pop that back down there yeah so there's the, there's the strings for the for the footings and and the wall strings so each each 
corner has, has, has actually generated a 3D super string for you. Um, yeah, so let's um, have a quick look at section. And let's actually just um, minimize that. Yeah, so I was just going to add the, the strings to the section. And maybe just turn, yeah, that's probably okay. We can probably see that pretty, let's make that a little bit bigger. Yeah, you can see, so you can see the strings at the top have been created. They're on the, the wall strings model. And he's named them as well. So W3 for wall 3, wall 2, and there's there's 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, sort of the 4 wall strings there. And also you can see the magenta strings here. Um, obviously they've got a different model, they're, the, they're in the footing strings model and they're called F1, you know, F2 and sort of numbered them um, going around as well. So there's uh, F1. Yeah, so it's generating those strings and yeah, they're in your model and, and they can be used. I um, just want to point out as well, if you open up an, uh, an open GL plan view, so under views new, this one here, OpenGL, and you, if, if you add your, um, let's add the strings on here, not the strings, the the mesh. So instead of getting um, like a normal, if you add a, the tri meshes to a normal plan, you get those sort of triangles um, looking. But if you if you add it to an open GL plan view, just wanted to show that. I'm not sure if people are aware of that. They actually get the textures coming through. Um, yeah, and it's just just a bit easier to to sort of see the solid text coming through uh, the texture for that wall. All right, yeah. So um, that's just about it for this one for this first video. Um, last thing I want to do is you just want to write a parameter file out to save this information. Um, so if you click up here and just call this um, method1 uh, parameter file and just write that file, it creates a file in your working directory um, with all this information saved. It just allows you to recall that later on. So if we just finish that and come back later on and go back into design tunnels and masonry block uh, retaining wall creator and then pick on the parameter file here that we just created and we just read that it'll fill in obviously all the the panel for you ready um yeah same as where you left it so you can continue on if you need to all right like i said that's that's all for this video uh, i'm going to create some other videos to show you the second method and also how you can um, copy this these standard numbers here for the block sizes and customize it to your own all right, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.